Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media and today by popular request I'm going to show you how I created the textures for the hunting knife. So if you want to know how to make the hunting knife then do look at the first part of this series. In this episode we're just focusing on the texturing. Now this will be more of an intermediate tutorial so I'm assuming that you understand UV unwrapping and that you've done most of my beginner nodes tutorials. Links in the description. Now I'm going to run through four different ways of texturing this knife. The first one is me just explaining how I would go about texturing this for games. The other three are different ways of applying textures and texture mapping and texture painting. Now this is a very quick and dirty way of texturing, it's not accurate, but it does give good results as long as you don't look too closely. So here's where we got up to. We've got the handle, the hilt and the blade as all separate objects. You will notice that if we look at our hunting knife picture, I haven't put in these sort of dinks and crevices. If you want a detailed tutorial about those aspects, then comment below and I'll show you through that. But that's fairly advanced modeling. Now I'm not texturing this as if I'm texturing for games, but if you were, you would want to select them all together and unwrap all together, but you don't need to necessarily follow along with this bit. It's just for explanation. So I'll go to the UV editing workspace to show you what I'm up to. And with everything selected, and it is worth pointing out, I've still got the mirrors on. So this hilt, for example, is mirrored in both the Y and the Z axis. And obviously the other parts are the Y axis. So those axes will also be sharing the UV space. So if I press U now and Smart UV Project, you can see I've already done that over here. And just press OK for the moment. We've got some slight issues. You can see my blade here. And remember, it's only half my blade, so the other side is exactly on top of this. And then the handle just here, and the hilt here. Now, for some reason, the hilt is much bigger than the handle and the blade. So have a think why that might be. Okay, so hopefully you remember, if I go into object mode now, and I'll just select on the hilt and press N to get my properties for the item, and you can see the scale is different for the hilt than it is for the handle, and the blade. So the blade and the handle both have a scale of one, but the hilt is much smaller, hence why it's coming out if I select all and go to edit mode, so much bigger on this map. So it is important that you reset your scale so I can select all, control A, and apply the scale. I always say reset, but it's apply. Now you can see they've all got a scale of one. I'll press N to get rid of that toolbar and select all into edit mode select all again, and U to unwrap, smart UV project. This time I'll actually put the island margin up and press OK. Now you can see it's fairly evenly distributed. You'll probably notice that it looks stretched. That's because the image in the background is not a square image. If I close that down, you can see on a square image, it actually looks how it's supposed to. So the knife, the handle, and things like the top of the knife, and all this section seems to be the hilt. So if you are doing this for a game engine, then all of these will be on one map. The problem here is that the blade and the hilt are metallic, yet the handle is dielectric or wooden. And again, if you want to put this into a game engine, then you would need to define the different parts, which are metallic and which aren't, on a separate black and white map. So just a couple of things to think about there. I'm going to do it in the very lazy way and just separate them out. And I'll show you another couple of hints along the way as well. So I'll stay in UV editing mode for now, and I'll just select the blade. Now if I go to front view and go into edit mode, I can actually unwrap, but instead of smart UV project or unwrap, I can project from view. And you can see it pops up in the middle there. I can then be very lazy and go into the shading editor, give it a new material. I'll press shift A to add texture, image texture, hook that up. Of course it goes purple because we haven't loaded an image into our texture. Let's zoom in just a touch and I'll choose my hunting knife. So this image here, and you can see at the moment, it looks pretty horrendous. Well, it's worth pointing out that I'm in cycles. That doesn't make too much difference. I'll just go across to look dev for the sake of speed and come out of camera mode as well. So that should be a bit easier to see now. And we can see that our map, if I change this to the UV image editor or the UV editor it's called now and go into edit mode, you can see where my UVs are and how they're mapped to our knife. But I should be able to go into here, select all, and grab this and move it into position. I can press control space bar to maximize my view and zoom in a bit. And I'm just scaling up and adjusting. You can turn proportional edit on, which is up here or O for short and select some verts and press G to grab. And then 
use your circle of influence to change how much is affected and how much isn't. So I'm trying to get the middle section to follow that blade and I'm slightly underlapping the edge so I don't get any of this green in. So here I'll move that down so it doesn't touch those top pieces. And let's press control space bar and see what that looks like. So I'll go into object mode so we can see it nice and clearly. It's not too bad. We're never going to get it great on the blade down here. And it's obviously going to stretch across the top here. So this is one way of doing it. And it's a very quick and easy way. If you need to sort out the top, you can go into edit mode and select those faces down the top. And you can unwrap those separately. So U to unwrap and just unwrap. And we can see them all down the side there. So I'll press control space bar on this and we can select them all, scale them down and rotate them and just move them to a section where there's an obvious color that matches the knife. So control space bar, let's go back to the, our view and see what we've got. And it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's not great down here. And in fact, I've got some extra faces there that I shouldn't have. So I'll quickly undo that. Okay, so that's a slightly better job. It's still not great, but it does the job. There is a slightly better way, which I'll show you on the wooden handle. Now we can just turn the metallic up and it gives it a nice sort of metal look. We might want to adjust this slightly so it's not so dark. And you can easily do that with Shift A, color. We can use some RGB curves or even simpler is brightness and contrast. RGB curves is a bit nicer because you can get much finer adjustments in the way it looks. And it doesn't look too bad. Of course, you can turn the roughness down as well and have it nice and shiny, but that's up to you. So that's one way of doing it. I'll show you a different way on the handle, which I think is a preferable way, to be honest. And that's using texture painting and stencils. Still a bit rough, easy and lazy, but still with good results. So I'll click on the handle and this time I'll go to the texture paint slot. You can see my original unwrap here and I'll want to re-unwrap that. So it takes up the whole of the image. And we also need to add some textures. So before texture painting, I'll go across to the UV editing panel. In fact, select it all, press U to unwrap and unwrap. Now that's fine. It's unwrapped it as you'd expect. There's no real need to mark a seam because it's right down the middle. However, one, it's not taking much of our texture space up, but also it's perfectly mirrored. So whatever I paint on this is going to be mirrored to the other side. And that means we will get a very unusual seam down the middle where the texture has obviously been copied across. So I think in this occasion, it is better if we apply our mirror first. So I'll go to the modifier and apply the mirror. So now we've got this shape here. We will actually need a seam this time. So I might as well use that seam down the middle, select it, control E to go to the edge menu and mark seams. That we use that for the unwrap. So A to select all, U, unwrap, and now you can see them both together. I will just increase the island margin with this dialog box down here. So usually I go for 0 0.06 and that just increases the space between the islands so there's no overlap when you start painting. So we've unwrapped. The next thing to do is to add our texture ready for painting. So we can go across to our texture painting workspace. There's our two unwraps. Obviously this has a subdivision surface modifier on it. So we're looking at that at the moment. I'm going to drag down a new window. So I'll go to the top here where my cursor changes to the cross and drag downwards and change this to the shader editor. I press N to get rid of the panel and I can create a new material in here or I can also create a new material here with a texture. So if I press plus on the texture and I want to do a base color, I'm going to call this wood painted. I think 1024 by 1024 should be fine. I don't need the alpha because there's no transparency and press okay. Now you can see it's added the material, the principled BSDF and the material output, but also this wood texture just there, which I can now paint on. Let's make sure it's over here as well. So if I press on the down arrow, I can find my wood painted. And this is the texture I'm painting on. Let's just test that's working. And yes, it is. So we're ready to paint unless we want a really black handle like this. What would be nice is to use that nice wood texture. So I'll go to my brush down to the section where it says texture, not texture mask, because that changes your brush head. This you can actually use a texture as a stencil. So I'll click on that down arrow, press new, and I'm going to call this wood stencil. It's mapping tiled at the moment, which will change in a second, but I'm going to show you what that does. Now to put the texture in here, we need to go to the texture tab 
or texture properties down the bottom here. So click on that. We've got the wood stencil texture open. If you don't see that there, it should be under this down arrow here. And we need to bring in an image or a movie, in this case, an image. We've already got the image loaded in. It's that hunting knife image. So there it is. So we can go back to the brush type and I can start painting that hunting knife image on top of my blade. Now this doesn't look so great. And that's because our texture is on tiled. If I change this to stencil, we get the image come up in our viewport. And basically to move this around or to scale it or to rotate it, you right click to move, right shift click to scale and control right click to rotate. You've also got that angle down here if you want to ever put it back to zero. You'll notice as well it's squashed, just click on the image aspect and it will maintain its aspect ratio. Now I can go to front view, move into position, scale it with shift right click and try and get it accurately in position, perhaps with a touch of overlap. And the problem is now when I zoom in, my stencil doesn't change. So zoom in first, then start adapting your image, which I should have done. So somewhere around there. Now before I start painting, there's an option under your brush settings. If I bring up the texture, you can see there is a symmetry option here. It also appears up the very top bar here, which you can middle click to move across this, and it's got it there as well. And I want to mirror across the Y axis. So if I start painting now, we should be able to see it in the Y axis, all going well. I'm going to paint it completely. So I've got a strength of one. My color is on white, because you can change the color to a pink if you wanted to, I'll undo that. And also if you're using a graphics tablet, you don't want the pen pressure enabled because you want to fully paint it like so. Now it should appear on the other side, which it does, that's great. But you can see that sort of mirror down the middle. So we will have to adapt this slightly and get a bit creative down the middle here. So for this one, I'll bring the strength down and I'm still using my mouse. I just tidy up the middle a bit. And so with a bit of effort, you can get the middle looking much better than mine, I'm sure. So if at any point you're worried about this seam down the middle, you can turn the symmetry off and start painting a bit more naturally. I find it best to do that secondarily so that you don't miss any bits of the texture to start off with. And if you want to clear the stencil, then go over to the texture again and just press the cross button here. It's still there. If you click on it, it's still there, but it just means it won't appear in your viewport. So there we have a very simplistic handle. For the last part, the hilt, I'll be doing something slightly different. So across the shading again, click on the hilt. Let's just quickly unwrap it first. So UV editing, I think I'll apply the mirror in the Z, but not in the Y. Select all, U to unwrap, smart UV project, put the island margin up and there's our unwrap. Now back into shading mode and let's work on our shading. So a new material, it's going to be metallic. We can change the base color to a goldy color and it looks very fake. So we need something a bit more to this. The way I've done it, Shift A to add texture, image texture, and I've used a scratched metal texture, which I will show you. I can't really remember where I found it, I'm afraid, but it's probably from somewhere like textures.com. And then let's hook that up and that looks okay. If we want to change the color of this, we can put it into a color ramp or we can do a mix color. So Shift A to add color, mix RGB, and I can mix it like this. I've still got my base color there, so I can copy it. So click on the color here, choose the color picker and copy from there, and then hook it up again. So we've got a bit of a mix, so a bit of silver and a bit of this texture, or we could use this black and white texture as the factor. And obviously it's mixing between white and gold. We can change this to a bit more gold, but darker. And then you've got sort of scratches, a combination of these two. Now this might be a bit complicated if you're new to nodes, but do check out node school where I explain some of these things. I did actually also use a slightly more complicated texture than that, which I'll show you if you're interested. So I'll bring these over here. Shift A to add input geometry. Now this node, this pointiness attribute only works in cycles. So I'm going to move across the cycles now. So in the render tab, I've got an HDRI in the background, I believe. Yes, there's one there. And I've obviously got my render engine changed to cycles. So to hook this one up, we mix between these two. 
If you've got Node Wrangler installed, you can control shift, right click, and set up a mix shader. You don't have to go this complicated, of course. Now it's coming from the position at the moment, I want the pointiness, and I put that into the bottom slot. So if I go all the way to pointiness, it looks like this at the moment, and all the way to color, it looks like this. And I'll show you what the pointiness node looks like. So I'll control shift, left click on this, and from the pointiness, I'll go to the viewer so you can see it. So not much is going on. It's a tiny bit lighter on the edges, but not much. And that's what the pointiness node does, but you have to put it through a color ramp to get any real effect from it. So if I press Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp, and put that in the middle. And now if I start bringing up the blacks, usually to around 0.4, a little bit over in this case, and bring down the whites, usually to about 0.6, so in this case, I can bring up the blacks a little bit more to around there. It will highlight the edges for me. So it gives a tiny stylized look. If I make the light bits lighter and the dark bits darker in this material here, then it will look like these areas and edges are more worn. So I can then hook this up to the bottom one. And let's just make sure we're looking at the principled BSDF. And now if I put the factor up, we can see this color ramp node. And if I change this to overlay, that does just that. It uses the darks from here and makes this lot darker and uses the lights from here and makes this lot lighter. You'll see what I mean when I click on the overlay and there's the results. So it's highlighted the edges more. If I bring that right in close together, you can see that even more. Obviously that's way more than you need, but hopefully you get the idea and it looks a touch more worn. We can actually use both these and put them into the roughness as well. So control shift left click on here to see exactly what this is gonna look like. And we really want the light bits to be shiny and the dark bits to be dark. So we can plug this into the roughness, see what that looks like, Control Shift Left Click on the principal BSDF, and it's extremely shiny. So what we'll need is another color ramp. So I'll just duplicate this one, Shift D, and put it in there. And let's bring that back to where it was originally. And if we just change the darks, which are obviously the glossy bits in this case, we can make it a lot less shiny and more rough. And the white is obviously fully rough. The only problem with that is that the edges are now rough and the middle bits are shiny and we want it the other way around. So we can come here and flip color ramp. Now the edges are shiny and the inside is rough. Depending on how much you want, you can just pull this towards the whites or you can bring down the value, therefore bring up the shininess. And now you can see those edges are much more shiny and the rest is not so much. At this point, it's a good idea to just adapt your colors slightly and make a few minor adjustments. And there we go, there's the hunting knife finished. Hopefully you've enjoyed this series. There's three different techniques there for how you can texture this model. Once you get used to them, they are really very simple and quick and easy with pretty good results by the end of it. Do remember they have their limitations. We haven't got any normal maps. It's not truly realistic. And if you look really closely, you'll see the errors. So let me know how you get on, get across to the Discord server and share your work there, or paste a link in the comments below. Also, if you've got any comments or thoughts or ideas, then comment those below as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.